Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to talk about lotteries and why they're important for discussing preferences. To begin, we want to talk about what is a lottery. Well, I give as an example the lottery as a lottery. So in these games that are run by states, you pay a dollar and then with some extremely low probability you win a million dollars and then with some extremely high probability you win zero dollars. But more generally, a lottery is simply a probability distribution over outcomes. So in the above example talking about the lottery, you have two outcomes, winning a million dollars and winning zero dollars, and with some probability each of those things is going to occur. Now in contrast, before we were just talking about preferences over outcomes that occur with certainty. So we were talking about winning a million dollars, winning zero dollars, and dying a painful death. And we said that you know someone might have preferences that look like this, where they prefer winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars, prefer winning zero dollars to dying a painful death, and prefer winning a million dollars to dying a painful death. And, you know, that's important to know, but, you know, what about if we mix these things up and we said all of these things can happen, what are your preferences going to be there? And, you know, here's an example of this. Here's a couple of lotteries, Lottery 1, Lottery 2. In Lottery 1, uh, with probability 0.4, you get a million dollars. With probability 0.4, you get zero dollars. And with probability 0.2, you die a painful death. And meanwhile, over in Lottery 2, with probability 1 half, you win a million dollars. And with probability 1 half, you die a painful death. And I ask, you know, which do these, which do the players prefer? And we're going to be pretty general about what we're going to allow for here. Uh, it might be the case that you have someone who prefers Lottery 1 over Lottery 2, or you might have someone who prefers Lottery 2 over Lottery 1. There's nothing that's going to be an, an inherent violation there. But we do need some sort of rules about consistency over these things, and that's what we're going to be covering in the next couple of videos on independence over lotteries and continuity. But to give you the intuition about why this is important, why we care about probability distributions over outcomes, these things that we call lotteries, recall back to matching pennies. We did this a very long time ago. In the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of matching pennies, both players play heads with probability one half and play tails with probability one half. So essentially what's occurring here in equilibrium is a lottery. So suppose I'm player one and you're player two. In the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, I'm going to play heads with probability one half and pro uh, tails with probability one half. So whatever you do is now going to be a lottery. So if you played heads as a pure strategy, I, by playing the mixed strategy, am giving you a lottery between this outcome and this outcome. And if you play tails with uh, probability one, then I'm giving you a lottery between this outcome and this outcome, just by mixing between uh, heads and tails, each with probability one half. And, Ultimately, in the equilibrium, what's going to happen is that each player is going to mix with probability one half. So we're essentially experiencing a lottery where you're getting this outcome with probability one fourth, this outcome with probability one fourth, this outcome with probability one fourth, and this outcome with probability one fourth. So essentially, what's going on here in mixed strategy Nash equilibria are lotteries, which is why it's so important that we discuss these things. Now, there's a couple of definitional things I need to give you before we go on to the next video. The first is, what does it mean to be in the support of a lottery? Well. A, something in, in the support of a lottery has positive probability of occurring. So in this example here in Lottery 2, uh, winning a million dollars is in the support of Lottery 2, and dying a painful death is in the support of Lottery 2, but winning zero dollars is not in the support of Lottery 2 because it occurs with probability zero. So everything over here in Lottery 1 is in the support because each of these things occur with positive probability. It's only these things here that occur with zero probability which are considered to be not in the support. And the other thing I need to discuss is something called a degenerate lottery. And here's a couple of examples here with Lottery 3 and Lottery 4. Lottery 3 is a degenerate lottery where with certainty you win a million dollars, and Lottery 4 is a degenerate lottery when you die a painful death with certainty. So like before when we were discussing outcomes that occur with certainty, we can actually express lotteries as these things that occur with certainty. We just have a special name for them. We call them degenerate lotteries. But it's important to remember that even things that occur with certainty are actually considered lotteries and this becomes important because it's sort of how we define mixed strategy Nash equilibria versus pure strategy Nash equilibria where you know you can think of a pure strategy also as a mixed strategy except you're playing something with probability one instead of mixing between two strategies so you only have one thing in your support of your lottery um, so that's why knowing things about degenerate lotteries is pretty important. Degenerate lotteries come up very frequently. We've seen plenty of times when we're playing pure strategy Nash equilibria. So, you know, degenerate lotteries actually are important and that will take care of that. So join me in the next video and we'll discuss independence over lotteries.